So I brought our own theme music to this. Are you allowed to use that? Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's, non, it's non-commercial. But uh, What's with the Jamaican theme? Well, we're drinking... Somehow, somebody bought Red Stripe. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> right, it fits in your, your whole entire palm. Ever been um, to Jamaica? Yeah, I've been. You have you been? Oh no, you told me you were on a plane that crashed. Or like, oh my God, yes, I was. To, yeah, go ahead. Tell right, the story. I was on a. Um, <laughs> I was on a, uh, a a charter flight, and it was a seven oh seven. That's how long ago this was, right? So it was like. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan. Child. <laughs> um, so no, I was on a. Uh, it was a seven oh seven. Yeah. And we went and came back and it was fine. But it was a really old plane then. I mean, the plane, it was like there were still, you know, cigarettes in the ashtray mm-hmm. from like the early 60s. Mm-hmm. So we go and come back. You know, it's fine. We get there, fine. We can come back, fine. A few months later, I heard like just a, a random radio. I was just listening to the radio and I heard a report that Independent Airways, which was the charter yeah. flight operator, a 707 had crashed in the Azores and I was like oh crap and then as they were reporting it it was they had a lot of 727s but that was their only 707 that was it was the one that I was on and it crashed it crashed but it was um, apparently eventually they found out it was pilot error they he came in too low and you know he sort of and it was really foggy and it was you know it was very, just a tragic situation but that was the same plane that I was on this so is, and this is a great way to start a car show. So let's start a. Uh, now a we car. have you. And now here, here I am. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, so the reason why we're sitting here like this is that you know everybody does podcasts, and since this show is sort of like drives podcast, but we don't, you know, all of our stuff is on YouTube. That we don't actually have a podcast. Not yet. Provider. Not yet. Exactly. We could eventually yeah. do that. But everyone in, in our family kind of does have a podcast. Exactly. So I'm going to be on the. Uh, the I'm going to be on the Smoking Tire podcast pretty soon with Matt Farrow. Your soundboard is an iPhone. My soundboard is an iPhone. Unlike Smoking Tire, where they have legitimate, they have like legitimate uh, soundboard. Sound, well, yeah, they have the they have a legit oh, you know. soundboard. Oh, we have Max. I'm sorry, we forgot to introduce oh, Max. Sorry. Well, let me. Well, let's just introduce everybody. Yeah. There's Max, obviously, on the soundboard. Hello. Jeff Musial, executive producer of Drive and. Uh, Ian Whalen, who wearer of many hats, wearer of many drive hats, producer. drive produ- yeah, producer of After Drive, a lot producer of a lot of shows now. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, also kicking, the ass. kicking some ass. Nice. Yeah. Also BRZ or that co-host. Apparently, yeah. That just be seen that. By the way, that was that was the first time I. <laughs> 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 you just assigned him to be a co-host without well, no, actually he, approving. He's been on how many how many BRZ or that? All the BRZ. Right. Yeah. So okay. BRZ or that it's is like of course. Segment. The segment of After Drive yeah. where we talk about what uh, whether you would buy the BRZ or of course a, another car. Right. And Ian, which started with Ian's uh, desire to get rid of his uh, Saab, which actually it's not actually that happen. it's not your desire to get rid of it, but you're known as Mr. Saab. Right, right? I like the Saab. And then I was thinking about getting rid of it and buying this Honda S2000. So we put the S2000 up against the BRZ. But the show concept wasn't really based on my desire to right. sell so my car. You just could lie about this that. right now. No one would have to point. Yeah. Right, because, you know, well, the thing was that BRZ is got so much hype that, um, and because it was the, the return of the rear drive lightweight car platform, you know, construct, that, you know, is that really something that you want to buy, or do you go back to another car mm-hmm. that had the same platform, but it's older and pr- maybe cheaper, maybe the same amount? But it's important to bring this up because the episodes, you know, one of the things we do, we have to do, as this is becoming a company, a legitimate operation of, of Drive, we look at the statistics and the analytics, and those episodes are doing so well in terms yeah. of retention. It's interesting, yeah. We never thought that a 45-minute episode on YouTube would actually do as well as it does. Right. Until you started really I, I'm I'm amazed. Look, dude, I'm as amazed as, amazed as you are. I, I just honestly, like, I, I, I get in front of the camera and I'm a mess and it's really like and I'm and this is sort of a learning thing for me being part of this also in the back you know in the background and also now in the foreground yeah um yeah it's just getting used to it but I mean we should mention that most of our hosts aren't here for this this version of this show that we're doing this podcast after drive yeah um 
but uh, you know, I'll, I'll be separately with Matt Farah pretty soon in LA, and then hopefully when Chris comes, we'll get Chris on this. We'll do yeah. the same kind of thing with Chris, yeah. and um, you know, Mike Musto. I mean, maybe Mike will be in LA. I'm not We're sure. We're gonna try to do something with Monterey Car Week. Yes. I, I don't know what, but you know, and and Larry has a podcast now too. So yeah, everyone on our team is basically doing these these podcasts and seeing that. You know, we never thought that YouTube would be a, a platform for communicating with, with enthusiasts as much as it's becoming. That's kind of where we are at this point. Yeah. Where Afterdrive used to be road test, but Afterdrive is now becoming this 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 part of the portfolio where there's two way more two way communication than anywhere else. Yeah. And actually, th that's that's one of the reasons we're doing this now with some of the things you brought up today. Yeah, and it's interesting. The um, it w sort of Afterdrive is like a podcast in front of a camera. That's um, our medium. And that's our medium because we don't have any other way to do this because we are supported by YouTube. Yes. And, uh, you know, so we use YouTube's stuff. So if YouTube had a podcast app or s of some sort, we yeah. would use that, but we yeah. don't. So anyway. Um, so we asked you guys uh, to ask us some questions about Drive, but maybe we should talk about Drive really quickly. Sure. Um, in terms of what exactly this is. Right, because you see Chris doing Chris Harris on cars. We've never actually explained this. Right, we? we've never explained this, and um, you know there are all these different shows, and like sometimes Tunes is on, and sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. But and Chris, yet Chris Harris is always on. Yeah. Um, well, the, the, the early days of this whole operation come from, of course, Fast Lane Daily. You know, we started making these YouTube videos back in 2006. You were the first writer for Fastlane? Yeah, Daily? yeah, night 2007. I left Jalopnik, so I started Jalopnik. Yeah. I left there in 2007. I started Jalopnik in 2004. Yeah, I know, that's <laughs> how long ago it was. I know, it's amazing. It's almost 10 year anniversary of Jalopnik. Uh, of Jalopnik. Yeah, that'll yeah. be next year. Um, I left originally in 2007, um, and then we ended up working together at a startup called Next New Networks, yep. which was a video startup um, that spawned Fastlane Daily. Yep. Which is which is on and things like YouTube. VOD Cars, which was the second podcast ever on iTunes, right? And Matt Farah's show, Garage Four Nineteen, Garage Four Nineteen, which initially that came from SEMA in two thousand and what was it? Two thousand and it was two thousand seven. Seven, yeah. With him and him and Alex, and we hired Did someone him. Someone say Fastlane Daily. Oh, look at that! It's hey, Derek D, it's the Derek host D. of Fastlane Daily. Oh, you're talking about something else? Yeah. Oh, okay. See you later. Derek we did, D. We did, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so that's because we we tape in the same sh same studio. Absolutely. We'll talk about that. Absolutely, I just don't feel comfortable with him walking underneath desks <laughs> ever again. Did he hidden? Okay, uh, but no, uh, it started with uh, SEMA 2007, where with Matt was the first time we we had brought him on as a quote unquote host with Alex, with the legendary uh, Cam Rider episode. Right, and we had all this stuff from SEMA that we didn't know what to do with, and it turned into Garage 419. Yeah. yeah, and it was funny because Matt Farah wasn't doing, he, he wasn't want, a host. He didn't want to be a host. Yeah, and, and he was the most natural person in front of a camera that I think I had ever seen. Yeah, right um, off the bat. Right off the bat. You know, a little refinement, and but the thing about, about uh, Matt was that he, he's persistent. Yeah, and right. And you see him now, and it's a lot different from bef before, but it took a lot of work, and he's... He, he I mean, you know, it's like, it just, he's, and he's... He's, you know, he's Matt Farah. He's on, he's yeah. on tune now, so that's... Absolutely. Um, uh, but, but to explain the whole question oh, yeah, about, yeah, going, uh, yeah. you know, going back to the, the, the portfolio of shows, you know, we like to say internally that all car guys hate each other. <laughs> Let's not even um, bring up people like Dan Fredrickson, who seems to hate everyone. Um, Dan Fredrickson, if, if you don't know, is a, a, a commenter who's vehemently a supporter of electric cars. <laughs> yes. He likes so. our electric car episode. There's only we, one. That's what, you know, I, I sort of did the electric car episode two weeks ago as a kind of homage to uh, Dan Fredrickson's, you know, sort of constantly pounding the, the drum for uh, electric cars. We yeah. need people like him. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I love curmudgeons. I mean, honestly, like, you know, it's funny because, you know. Peace out, guys. Hey, Off to Road there. America. This is kind of. That's true. Yeah. This is weird. Hey, take it easy. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Take it easy. Um, our production crew going to uh, Road America. For the America Lamont series. America Lamont yeah. series. Yeah. But, no, uh, it, you know, we always say internally, and we've always said this from the Fastlane Daily days, that how do you get a, a, a community full of people who hate, who hate each other to come together right. and rally for something important? And I think Top Gear has kind of been that pinnacle for many years and from the early days of their new, seas, new, new series, you know, Top Gear's been around since the 70s, but when they redid it with Clarkson and Wilman 
Um, you know, they, they're a production company. They kind of formed it to be an entertainment show more so than anything else. And then now, uh, you know, when, when Drive was started, it was like, how do you get all these car enthusiasts to not hate each other? Right. And, um, well, we kind of created this umbrella, this portfolio, like a stock portfolio, and had people from different genres within the industry kind of bring their audiences. And then eventually we started cross-pollinating the hosts. And that's how we've kind of built the Drive brand up to be as as big as it is today and not saying it's big but it's it's growing yeah because we've done something like that right and and the you know the idea that we took um people that we knew like i used to work with chris harris at yep. zero to 60 magazine yep. uh chris was always a great writer and it was fun to work with yep. and we um, all knew each other before and drive. that's the thing yeah. and 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 you we we all knew farah i mean yep. musto and i and farah used to do a radio show on uh RPM. sirius yeah. and on, this uh, is why you're so good with a microphone no no that's you. why I'm, I'm much more comfortable with a microphone than i am standing sort of naked in front of you a, had a you had a uh, a national audience we did i mean we had a, and we were we truckers were truckers across north america <laughs> right, <laughs> every <laughs> canadian it was mostly canadian <laughs> so the canadian truckers used to call in and we actually had the ice road truckers on the show once that was fun that's cool but the Cana but we all we had a giant following of Canadian truckers that would be just I don't know why American American truckers were I guess listening to country music radio but for some reason the Canadian truckers listened to us yeah. and so we would go to the phones and we'd be like hey this is Neil um, driving across um, I'm in Manitoba you know it's like <laughs> really holy I'm crap, in the Northwest you know. Territories in the so Northwest <laughs> Territories like carrying a you know a load yeah. of uh, iron ore or something from up there Is that no but i remember a pipeline or something yeah, yeah it was I like remember, oh, pipes right to the pipeline i remember yeah. driving through kansas and i was on in on an audi trip or something and um with matt actually audi mileage marathon and we turned on sirius and we were listening to you and and musto oh yeah and because you guys were because matt was away yeah so it was just <laughs> musto and i yeah. yeah so it's it's really funny to see after you know the six five six years that we've kind of started this and we've been persistent enough to get to the point where now we actually have the whole family under the same umbrella. Finally. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, and it's funny because we're not, you know, you look at Motor Trend, right? Motor Trend does a, a and you know, to, and I, I'm, I didn't say anything. I just, right. No, Motor Trend is another channel. Absolutely. On, uh, and, um, you know, they're an established magazine. Many, many, so, we're many, sort many, of, many years. Yeah, many, many years. And we're yeah. sort of a ragtag bunch that kind of congealed around this channel yeah. so uh, people wonder you know it's sort of it makes me laugh when people sort of think that we're um, a larger organization than we are nope it's just this this <laughs> yeah. is it this makes it happen and it's kind of and then of course all our production production people Absolutely. and all that yeah. other stuff we're, you know it's, it's 19 people total it's 19 people total right That's everyone and no yeah and there's no like f giant organization backing us no. it's just Except youtube Google. Well, Google and YouTube, right? So <laughs> no, it's no, YouTube, but, but, but we've, it, yeah, it's exactly. us. It's, it's us, us. But, uh, but, it's but us. executing it is just us. And executing is probably the operative word sometimes. So anyway. Um, <laughs> 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 Why, Max? So Max, just, just to introduce Max, Max um, was, is a producer on Jalopnik on Drive show. And he actually created the look and feel for Jalopnik on Drive. So if you go back and watch some of those shows, it's basically it's Max doing everything. Thank you. I laughed so that you'd introduce me. Max. There yeah, you go. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Max and I went to Bangkok for Race of Champions. And you know, when Max came on board, he wasn't too much of a car person. But yeah. it was fun having him, like, having him next to Sebastian Vettel, Michael Schumacher, and all the, and, you know, well, and all the big racers. <laughs> well, Max is the ultimate foil because like, yeah. he's, not, yeah. he's not really a car guy, but he's, he's, a good, he's good at storytelling and... and yeah. um, and video production stuff. So, like, he'll take, uh, like, the kind of viewer perspective where he'll be like, well, you know. But he gets it enough to, yeah. you know. I think everyone on the team, I think that's our core competency is we're great storytellers. You can, you can pop into any video and start fresh. Yeah. You know. It's, I mean, hopefully that's, that's, well, that's what our, we're going that's for. Our goal. Right, exactly. But what do you got? All right. So, here are the questions. So, let's just, um, let's go through some of the questions people asked. Um... Let's find a good one. Uh, that's fine. Oh, yeah. Why does Spinelli look so damn good? What's your secret, mate? This is an Ian response. Well, I don't know why. I, I can't respond. Because he, he edits you, so he makes you look good. No, Ian uses the fat lens. <laughs> yeah, I, I try to make you look fat no, on purpose. I, I think, no, no, no. I think I, I look great because of a clean living, yeah. mostly. And um, 
No, I, I and I, good, I love sarcasm. Good That's hair right. Products. So this sarcasm is a, and hair product. hair product. No, no, no. You know what it is? Not hair product. I uh, just wash it every other day. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do. Because if you wash it every day, it'll look straw-like. No, I mean, you know, this, you know, I, I'm, I'm a god. I'm a freaking god. That's why. No, no. no <laughs> I honestly like. It, uh, next I, question, Mike. Next yeah, question. Else? All right. Um, let's go. I'm happy to we've got him away from the Jamaican soundboard on his iPhone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go back <laughs> you to just, that. You just insisted. <laughs> <something. laughs> Sorry. Okay, so um, Philippe Fortier asks, "What is the best or worst part of your jobs?" Uh, Ian can go first. Um, I don't know. I think in being working around something that I actually enjoyed with before it was a job. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good to have good guys around us that we can all talk to and have fun with, even when we're not. When we are working and when we're not working, and mm -hmm. I don't know, it, this job allows for a lot of great experiences. It's amazing. I I, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. There's n not much to complain about. I, I just lack of sleep. Yeah, yeah. We're not. That is we're the worst non. Part. We're nonstop. We're I, flat out. We Honestly, work too much. Well, well. Yeah. So so the the weird thing about turning something that is an interest into a job, which came to me later. I mean, I was in market research for ten years, and um, and so, sort of bailed out of that to, to get into Jalopnik. Um, you know, it's sort of, you it, like, people don't understand when you complain, because you can complain in any job, and people go, yeah, you know, that job sucks or whatever. And then, but, but, like, we're playing with cars every day, so nobody has any sympathy for us, Yeah. right? So I, I could barely say there's almost nothing bad about this job except for staring at it at a blank page after you've driven a car that didn't really make much of an impression on you, and yet mm -hmm. you have to come up with a thousand words on it. Mm -hmm. right? That was the first thing. Although you have a bunch of notes, I mean, there, there's a professional aspect to, to doing this. But second, um, well, the money, <clears throat> but that's a whole other story. <laughs> um, <laughs> eventually, you know, they, they were, this, we don't make BBC money around here. This isn't yeah, like, yeah. I mean, we're not getting rich at this. This is the other thing that a lot of people sort of mm. think that drive right. is a way for us to make a bunch of money on enthusiasts you know backs but we, we're not i mean this is just yeah. we're just we're regular people in. and we have regular other we have other jobs too we sort of we keep other jobs to keep this running absolutely right yeah. that's that's how shoestring this is it's not exactly i mean they you know other jobs within the industry other it's jobs within the industry so yeah i'm not slinging burgers to, yeah, exactly. to keep this going no i mean yeah. i write for jalopnik and popular mechanics you've done a lot in new york times right you've done we, oh, i mean i've done a bunch of yeah. stuff but i only i mean i try to keep those two because yeah. i have we, we do more of course stuff here yeah. Um, but you also do yeah, so videos. Per, yeah. So uh, tangent vector, the production company that kind of it's one of the one of the cores of drive. But the, the people behind the scenes, um, you know, doing doing uh, video production for manufacturers and, and of the sort. So, yeah. Yeah. And I work with JF on that. And yeah, uh, that's right. I also do freelance for the Criterion Collection, which I worked for before I came yeah. here right. for about nine and a half years. So yeah. we're all keep them pretty busy yeah absolutely well it's sort of an interesting question that somebody had um i i wasn't going to go to it so early but actually it's um it sort of pertains um it's another question about his style and looks yeah yeah there. oh yeah, yeah. Is it so another compliment? spinelli is is awesome how did he get to be so awesome <laughs> um it's a good question man. i mean really can you uh, answer that i play a lot of backgammon <laughs> Is that a, why, Max, is that uh, so hard to believe? That, uh, is that release the toxins? Is that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I, I don't know that much about the game. Yeah. Um, okay, so Paul Duarte says, or du Duarte says, I would like to hear more about the drive team's day off, days off and to hear a bit about the hosts not being a gearhead. I'm not sure about, I, I think that the point is, I, I, oh, so I think he's saying, like. What do we do on our free time? What do you do at our free time when, when, when we're doing for jobs what a lot of other people do on their free time yeah so are we gearheads or what are you a gearhead Jim? yeah absolutely well in, in certain regard i'm not who's I'm not the biggest gearhead who's the biggest wrench in this entire organization it must be it's mu definitely must yeah. Yeah, yeah i work uh, on my own car but usually not by choice you might be second <laughs> biggest wrench yeah. I, you know it's funny sort of ian is like the you know the the dark horse around here but like you're you're a fairly accomplished uh yeah i've i had a couple old sobs that i've had to work on i had a i started out with an 86 900 turbo and then i went on to another one it was another 86 900 turbo that was an spg it needed almost like a complete restoration 
So I kind of did it like a rolling restoration while it was through college and a little bit after that. Nice. And yeah. made that car really nice and then eventually sold it and bought the Vigan. And the Vigan sits a lot, so it needs attention sometimes. So I'm kind of... It's almost as bad as me with my, my car. Well, your car. Right. So that, that sort of begs the question, what are we driving? So you're driving a Vigan. Right. You're driving I your 800,000 mile... 200,000 mile Audi A4 that... Everyone thinks I'm an Audi person, quite honestly. After my experience with this car, probably won't own another Audi. <laughs> well, because you're, you, you're up to your... You're up I've to your, spent uh, I mean, three times on maintenance that the actual cost of the car at this point. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's terrible. Yeah. Still doesn't have air conditioning. I have an old Audi A4. First gear doesn't work. Windows don't work. First gear works. Just well, you don't like have a any. Speaking of, but 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 wrenching wise, you don't have any time. You only do this job, or and your other. I'm like, you don't yeah. have a lot of time for wrenching. Uh, no, I don't. This is it. And I'm I'm defending I, that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm taking. Uh, you know, I think I'm taking my first few days off this weekend by racing at VIR. That's that's still gearhead stuff. Yeah, it, it's it, it right. Just, I don't have a camera on. That's pretty much the only difference. That's true. I'm sure there will be video. During this weekend, though, yeah. there will be, of course. Um, I s- started out in the muscle car realm, which I'm not really and Metallica in right realm. Now. Metallica <laughs> and muscle car realm, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my first. Oh, so so we'll go to we'll go we'll segue right. Well, actually, no, my so my car right now I still have the uh, sort of as far from a muscle car as you can get. It's MR, an MR2 Spider with that, the uh, best. Looking headlights I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, Larry. <laughs> by the way, Larry, drive clean. Larry just totally, totally restored those headlights. Although one of them is a brand new lens, the other one is uh, is a Larry lens, and you can't tell the difference. That's awesome. Um, I, yeah, no, I bought it. I really wasn't going to keep it that long. I was just going to keep it like maybe a year just to have it, just to check it out and see how it was, see how it goes. And you know, I, I wanted to own a mid-engine car so um, I could tool around and you know, and see if I it would kill me or not. Um. <laughs> but no, and then, and then the plan was, and then I, I went, I was at Zero to 60 Magazine. I wanted to make it a project car. Oh, you didn't even bring that up, by the way. You were editor-in-chief of Zero to 60. You yes. mentioned it a little bit. Well, Zero to 60, I mean, yeah. I mean, I loved Zero to 60. Th- those was sort of the best time I ever had in print was working at Zero to 60. Oh, good. Thank you. You preface that as print. Yeah, no, I mean, it was really, that was, the, that was my dream magazine to work for. Cool. So that, that was fun to be able to do that. And um, a lot of those guys went off and worked for Ken Block now. Um, and... Uh, and it's still sort of a website, and and Rides Magazine, its sister publication, mm-hmm. is still in, in print. So Will and Crenshaw. And yes, and Crenshaw and, and Will. Great and job. Yeah. Anyway, so I really wanted to do a project like a time attack car at zero to sixty with my with my MR2. The perks of being an auto journalist. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. I thought we were going to get a bunch of you know free, free parts, crap. Free yeah, and stuff, like do a project car thing. Doesn't. And happen. then I went to try to get parts from the uh, from the parts manufacturers from the aftermarket guys and they were like yeah um <laughs> yeah we have stuff but we're not really supporting that as much i mean it was like you're about four years late <laughs> on doing a, an mr2 spider you project a, a brand new car that they want to profile right now. exactly yeah um and oh just to be really clear that 993 in the intro to the show that is, is your car is not my car <laughs> <laughs> it's um it belongs to the sorry Classic guys car club yeah Manhattan. Um, I, wa- I I missed the boat on the 993s. They're insanely expensive right now. Like you can't get a good Carrera 2 mm-hmm. 993 for under 35 grand, mi- I mean minimum. And that's like tons of miles, mm-hmm. maybe no rebuild on it. I mean, just like it's amazing how expensive those things are. Um, that's a Carrera 4, by the way. It's um, yeah, cool. I love it. It's really a nice car, and they they let me drive it whenever I want. So drive it around the city, get gas. You know, me and Ian. Yeah. Went up, like went up this under was, the L. Hey we guys, can you go cloisters? get thirty seconds of footage for the intro of Afterdrive? Six hours later. <laughs> well, you know, we. You, you, what else did you think was gonna happen? We did the Manhattan tour. How long? Do you, I mean, it takes a while to like. This is the Manhattan. I, yeah. The shots I saw were four blocks away from Classic Car Club. No, no, we no, went up to the cloisters. We went up to, we there, went to the Bronx. There's like one shot from there. No, we, <laughs> dude, all of those shots, all those L train, the L train shots, and the and the getting gas shot is up and like where Max went to school, up by uh, Manhattan Max College. Max isn't even paying attention. He's supposed to be. I'm d- doing You're technical things. Audio. Why are you? Yeah, I'm gonna start doing some technical things. Too. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, so Next that's question. that's our car. So, all right. So, obviously, like 
I really want to know what n- not us, but Musto and Chris. I want to yeah. know what Chris's first car was. We're gonna yeah, find out. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I don't know what. We'll what update Chris, you guys. We'll yeah, we'll we'll do this again with with those guys. Yeah. Um, if Drive Host could have any car, what would it be? To live with every day. I, just any car. Have any car. W- however you want to take that. I'm pissed at, ha- at Harris for getting the five twelve. Oh, cr- yeah, Chris just got a 512 uh, Ferrari. Or it was a, the old Testarossa. It's sort of a newer um, Testarossa you got, TR. If I could have any car, Mura. Lamborghini Mura? Yeah. Yeah, I guess, well, I mean, if you have to, if unqualified, yeah. yeah that was, that was an unqualified question. That was that. Any, any car? If I could have yeah, owned exactly. any car, be, yeah, it would totally be Lamborghini Mura. Yeah. Because why would you not own a Lamborghini Mirror if you could? Um, Matt, uh, Ian? I like mirrors, but uh, that's a really hard one. I'm kind of weird around here. I actually like weird old pre-war cars. Well, I can't have Do you want a Marmon? You want uh, like I don't a know, like, an old, like, a, not like a 30s Bugatti or something what? like that. I don't know. That's not what I'd get. I'd, maybe a 959 or something. Actually, if I could have any car, the Paris the car 959. Oh, I would drive that every day. <laughs> you would, you would probably drive that every day. Yeah, That's I mean, except you know it's when a practical the, car when the carbon fiber transmission, when you, uh, what do you call it? transmission that housing hit a uh, nope. one of the rocks outside. N- not a qualified question. Yeah, I just answered. well, I hit a curb what with about the you? Uh, to drive every day. No, just I would as the question was phrased. I mean, God, all right. So this is this is this is our way of educating the audience to ask better better questions sometimes. Yeah, possibly qualifying. Uh, Lamborghini. Oh, well, no, 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 no. I got it. Um, uh, Lancia S S four. Look at you. That's good. Last of the two wheel drive. That's cool. Uh, big Group B rally. That's cool. Cars. Um, I mean, I like the Audis, but um, but uh, I you know the the Lancia is a. Uh, I got a soft spot. It was my first uh, radio-controlled car also. That's why. All right, let's see what else we got. Um, oh, Z-Man Porsche Driver asks, are you guys ever going to play the Pagani episode, the teaser shows with the, Z- the Zonda and the Huayra? That wasn't a teaser. That was a drive moment. Yeah. And there is no... There is no... Yeah. That was it. Chris got like five minutes yeah. with those cars, Together, and that's yeah. what he did. And, and I think that we just were not clear enough we about were, what yeah. that show was so i we take the blame but there awesome. is not going to be a longer not yet maybe we'll do it if we can get those cars again yeah, yeah we would like to but right. and I the mean, legend continues <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we're always trying to like we're i'm i'm already in the pre-production process of inside koenigsegg too doing the new series of inside koenigsegg and there's always an opportunity to go back to bagani you know yeah. we've got good relationships with with all those manufacturers. Do I don't think we have a bad relationship with any manufacturer. Well, here's a well. The question then is, uh, I forgot who asked it. I'll find out who asked it. Um, you did inside Koenigsegg. Yeah. What other car company would you want to go and do an inside look at? That's very difficult because I think we've done all the ones I wanted to do. Uh, that was Mac Ochoa. Um, we did inside Bentley, which is coming in October. Mm-hmm. Uh, a series on how they construct all the Bentleys, uh, the Mulsanne specifically. Um, I don't know. I would love to go back to McLaren and do P1. P1 would be amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I would love to do. I would love very to very difficult to get that access. I'd though. love to do inside Ferrari. Even though you know Ferrari, um, there are photos I saw that never were supposed to make it to anyone's desktop, email, whatever, of how they constructed the the, the FXX. Remember those? Yeah, yeah, the Enzo uh, the race en- car. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember? How, did, you ever see, did I ever show you the photos? No. Of how they actually built that car? No. It's a shed out back, and, like, literally part the cars are, are, like, on stands, and, like, bits of the bodywork are on bottles or, or cans of paint. Like, they didn't have proper... You like, have like a modern production. Line. It was not. It was literally a you back can. shed. I it's kid like you not. It was style of Ferrari. Wait, exactly. wait, is this the prototype or no. all of the cars? All that they of the FXXs wow. were built in a small shed, and I, I actually, I'm probably not supposed to talk about this. But I have oh. photos. It couldn't do us any uh, anywhere. <laughs> uh, but no, there, there were photos of the FXX um, being built on just on top of paint cans, and just like it was like four guys in a shop redoing the body and everything. It was the body shop more than so anything else. Wow. So it would be interesting to see that, but I've doubt Ferrari would let us see stuff like that. 
Yeah, I doubt it. Um, Ferrari is not quite as forthcoming as Christian von Koenigsegg when no. it comes to showing off what no. what's going on. I, I just want to be very keen here with with Christian um, with with Koenigsegg in general. There was nothing in there we couldn't film. Yeah, we saw sure. everything. I, I don't think that there would be a, a manufacturer that would be that forthcoming with as much technology and information as Koenigsegg was. Yeah, that's really cool. I think it might, maybe one day, it would be cool to do some aviation behind the scenes. You know, that might be interesting. Drive. Yeah. The, plane, the plane show now. <laughs> drive the flying. You never know. <laughs> um, you got to drive down the runway. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. We'll just, we'll just do a whole show about how planes get down the runway. Right yeah. and and like breaks the breaks when they land. And stuff. Let's let's. I want to stand this topic a little, sure. a little bit further. Koenigsegg, Pagani, McLaren, Porsche Classic. Porsche Classic was much better than I thought it would be in terms yeah. of seeing them work on real quotes. We did Aston Martin Works. Yeah. I'm trying to think, if there are any Japanese manufacturers I would want to go to? Well, I I'd love to do a really cool in depth piece on the sort of the uh, the archive the Nissan archive maybe yeah that would be interesting would be yeah. very cool um you know and like the big three Ford would be good yeah. big three of uh, Ford would be yeah I mean because Ford racing has there's a history of Ford racing that Leo's head would explode if you went there I would maybe do something like um uh Caterham Caterham would, would be, be cool. interesting yeah especially Yo, I'd love to do Caterham, especially yeah. right now with what's going on with Tony Fernandez Oh yeah, like he's up to he's up to good stuff right yeah. now. And I was about know, to say no good, but he's, he's up, up to, to good. Yes, good. Yeah, I, I, I think one of the this is a tangent of, of sorts, but I think that in the next three years we're gonna see Tony, Tony Fernandez do some remarkable things with Caterham as a brand. You know, he Air Asia, like he's built a proper company. Yeah, and then everyone's like, why are you investing in Formula One? What's the purpose of buying Caterham, the brand, and all this? I think he's got some interesting stuff in the pipeline. Yeah, I do too. I mean, they're 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 a very solid company, and they do, you know, it, what it is they they make a great product, but they also do batch versions. Like yeah. they, t you know, that five hundred horsepower, you know, it's like why? the V eight version. Yeah. yeah, it's it's it's, it's fantastic. Awesome, but it's cool. Fantastical. Um, it's fantastic though, but oh. it's fantastical. <laughs> it's fantastical. <laughs> it's freaking fantastical. All right, these guys. Got? All right, hold on a second. Let me get what do we got. Uh, Ian Kyle Burkhardt asks. Did Ian end up buying a BRZ or what? All right. Well, that, that kind of picks up what I was talking about earlier. I never was interested in purchasing the BRZ, but the car, I was interested in purchasing. So it was just a sham, wasn't it? No, but huh. we were just using my interest as a kind of jumping off point to right. discuss the merits of either buying a new car versus a slightly depreciated used car and yeah. what you could get for your money. E46 M3. That's a good example. E46 M3. Okay. We'll talk about that at some point. Cause we will. Of, the E46 M3 is kind of the, the unicorn car around here, even though it's only like you can get one for like Camry money. But yeah. that's the yeah, car that actually, yes. everybody around here is like, we're going to eventually all show up with one of those at some point. Yeah. If we want to deal with Thanos problems. And all, all right. All right. Take it but easy. But I, I am a fan <laughs> of that car, and I, I just wish it was a little bit e easier to live with. Yeah. Okay. Garrett Nelson asks, when will we see Chris Harris in a Stingray with a seven-speed manual? I can't answer that. I yeah, know. well, so Chris is, uh, I, I don't know when Chevrolet is doing a specific UK drive for UK journalists. Yeah, but, yeah. Or, and I, or we also, we would have to get, we got to get Chris over here. He comes over a few times a year, and it's just about logistics and yeah. I, we you know, gotta get him in that and the Viper yeah. around the same time. Yeah. Because I think he would really like the Viper, even though I think he would think it's it's something like barking mad or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, um, and this is the thing to pe keep in mind. You know, we were talking about how flat out we are. Barmy, how even. How Sorry. flat out we are in terms of production. Yeah. Chris is on a whole new level in terms of he's turning stuff around. We should talk about how. Chris, so, so the other question that people ask a lot is why aren't Chris Chris's episodes like a half hour long? Chris is the hardest working man in this business. I don't know anybody who turns around video in such a, a variety as Chris does. I don't want to say that necessarily. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell is that? I don't know, but like, I, oh, I, I don't want to say I, that. I, I, say, I, I look at like Tom Morningstar, for example. No, 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 no. I, I mean, in terms of automotive journalists. Tom oh, Morningstar, yeah. Okay. okay. Tur all right. Tom Morningstar, which, who is our uh, production of, guy on yeah. the West Coast. Yeah. 
um, one of our production production guys. I mean, yeah, they do an insane work. He's, he's turning out a video every f- two, three I days mean, for different I mean shows. producers and, I mean, yeah, all right. That, yeah. I mean, um, good point. But yeah. I mean, like, automotive journalists. Yes, of course. So Chris, Chris goes to all of these drive events and he does great shows even if he has to shoot them himself yeah smash and grab is his term and it's smash very much and grab, true. Yeah. the gt3 video like let's be reminded he shot that himself yeah while hosting it and while driving yeah it's, and, and it's while only having a few hours with the car exactly and that's that's uh what's not bear gross who's the guy the survivor man yeah he's survivor filmed, man he, <laughs> he films himself doing those <laughs> shot yeah less less what is it less strout less strout yeah. yeah, he literally he, he he goes to a turn, puts four cameras down, drives down the road, does a shot, come back, and yeah. right. Chris Harris is the survivor man of, of automotive, automotive journalism. journalism. Yeah, so that's why you don't see half hour Chris. Well, so you it's see not always, more. It's not always Chris. Neil. Right. Neil well, no. Neil, no yeah. All right. So let's that's just okay. say. Yeah. Let's just say. Right. Chris and Neil. Yeah. Chris, and by the way, Neil is doing some of the best <laughs> f- f- uh, best videography on the web yeah. having to do with cars. So yeah. Chris is not only crushing it himself, but Neil, but Neil is, is crushing it yeah. also. That team so is... They, they, yeah, that's the best, that's the most solid team They're since Lennon and McCartney. I mean, that is like, <laughs> they are the Glimmer Twins. Yeah. Well, give me another reference, Max. No. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it's hit or miss. You know, some, sometimes Neil does something, sometimes Chris has Rhodes to do it Randy Rhodes and Ozzy Osbourne. But, but... <laughs> that combination, that team, the way Chris, you know, when we first spoke to Chris about drive, when we first came up with the drive concept two years ago, he said, he, it's not happening. Yeah. He didn't think it was possible. Right. And he's kind of perfected the, the, the craft we started. Right. He's taking it to a whole new level. Oh, he's taking it to another level. Yeah. And actually, the other thing with him is that uh, he does more shows rather than longer shows. Yes. So he would rather do... Different you know, topics, different, different topics, yeah. and stay on. And like he doesn't have a, se- a season. He does shows basically all year. It's I mean, 40, except for 40 40 some, forty-six episodes. Y- yeah, year. exactly. Yeah. Which is pretty. I mean, I don't know anybody else in who's doing that. Um, so I don't think anyone's doing as much content as Drive is uh, uh, entirely. Our right. portfolio, our back catalog, is bigger than you know. We're you know. Let's. Uh, I'm just gonna start using this as an example. But like Fastlane's up to seventeen hundred episodes. 1700 episodes and drives in the 500 episode range and you know we're pushing a lot of content for how it's a lot of content yeah. um so anyway that's why chris doesn't do half hour episodes yeah um one day perhaps we will have a million dollars to spend on a chris harris episode as if like, as if it were top gear but that's when this like with space shuttles and rockets and somehow <laughs> we end up in north korea yeah, exactly and, all yeah. that stuff happens for for, for our, our bang for a buck now <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> All right, next question. So uh, Bob Nielsen, N-I-J-S-S-E-N, N- Nielsen, uh, name the best front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, and all-wheel drive streetcar of the last 20 years. All right, we'll do front-wheel drive first. So All right. Go around the room. It's my uh, 2002 Saab 93. Oh, of course, of course it is, Ian. With the uh, Quay fluted slip that didn't come stock. Oh, so you, you put that in? Well, the guy I bought the car from. Did. Okay. Okay. And that kind of made, makes it really good. 20 years. Quaif Limited Slip is a, a great add-on in any any car. Yeah. Um, they should have made them that way. All right. Original okay. GTI. Original GTI first gen? No, oh, no. That's more than 20 That's years. too old. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, Mark, not, so Mark 3 GTI. All right. <laughs> Mark 3 GTI. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark 3 GTI. All right. Yeah. I'll, g- I'll give you that. I'm going to go with... Um, Last gen Mazda Speed Three, really? Yeah. I oh. always heard that the the Acura Integra Type R was a great front wheel drive car. I've never driven one, but guess I what? Know. I never drove. What Integra Type R? That's what I just said. I know. I'm just <laughs> joking. Um, all right. Fr- uh, all wheel drive. All wheel drive. Um, I would. I guess I'd have to say maybe the 993. Turbo, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Huh. Saab strikes again. But that's a good right, one. That's a that's turbo. a really good one. It's fine, yeah. It's a fine car. I never. No, I mean, wait a minute. You you're talking about the one, what what year nine? With the one with the uh, the X. What is that? The X all wheel drive, or the one before that? I don't know. I just know it's all wheel drive. Just the Torsen, whatever it is. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I never actually drove one. 
I mean, it was all Torsen, but <laughs> I'm gonna, all right. Torsen, wait a minute. It's, it, Torsen did, what was it? Um, four incarnations of the Torsen thing, so it's like second, I guess. I don't know. I've been underneath a 993 Turbo, and I still don't know, so I'm trying to think. All right, uh, my, my, get my thing uh, is, I'm going to say it, Audi RS4, B5, the original twin turbo wow. V6. B5 RS4. Not a great handling car by any means, and I don't think, th- I think... I think in terms of beauty, in terms of a statement, I think that was one of the special cars in the all-wheel drive category. And Chris Still drove is. it on one of his yeah. episodes. Yeah, he, he did. drove the one from the uh, museum. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool, yeah. Uh, I will go with Evo 8. Oh, look at you. Evo 8 is still, you know, the batshit Evo. Okay. Um, okay, let's keep this going. Uh, rear-wheel drive? Rear-wheel drive. We didn't do rear-wheel drive yet. Okay, go ahead. Acura NSX. What? Really? I don't know. And th- there's so many. You don't care it, about rear-wheel drive. This is no, like. No, I, I really do care about rear-wheel drive. That's why I wanted to buy the S2000. Oh, that's right. I forgot. But I always have loved the NSX. Okay. I mean, that's like, a, you know, kind of in our stratosphere. Pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sh- we could go crazy with rear-wheel drive. I know. Rear-wheel drive could be any car. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But let's. All right. But why don't we keep it to the same, the same level as the other cars we've mentioned? Oh. Right. What were you going to say? Well, you could say, say RS. I was going to say GT3. 997 yeah. GT3. Okay. And I've driven, I, I actually got to drive the new GT3, and as, as it's too fast. Yeah. I'd kill myself. I'd get sure. arrested. Well, it's then, too good. The 997 GT3 is the pinnacle of, of Porsches, yeah. I think. You get a yeah. uh, wheel spin at the top of two. There we go. <laughs> That's right. There we go. All right, Ian, are you want you want to stay, stay with NSX? It's fine. You can. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I don't know. There are so many cool cars that are rear-wheel drive. I mean, like we talked about before, the Mura. Yeah. Actually, that's not. Again, we're screwing up with our math here. It's okay. It's okay. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'll st- I'll stick with the NS. Okay. What about you? Uh, Porsche Cayman R. Whoa! Best steering, and uh, and best place to put an engine. Have you <laughs> driven the new Cayman? No, and I don't intend to. Really? No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, next As an automotive <laughs> journalist. No, I'm kidding. I do not intend I'm to driving drive it next week. New cars. I'm driving it next week, um, going up to Pebble Beach for oh, the yeah, uh, cool. Pebble Week. So yeah, I'll be. That's so normal. T- Actually, it's. I will have driven it by the time this goes up. Um, so I will you let you know ch- next time. <laughs> are you changing? Sorry, are you keeping uh, a base Cayman or no? Apparently, we are driving the S. N- well, the uh, the. The, the proverbial hundred thousand dollar Cayman, right? Whoa. Yeah, so that's the thing. The, the spec'd up Cayman into okay. the hundred. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like in the press fleets. I, I actually I enjoyed the base Cayman that we had when we shot the uh, S the, or regular the regular ca- base Cayman, the really? one that was in the Chris Harris Matt Farah episode from Wales. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I was driving the one that, that Chris car said was wasn't quite fast enough. It's not fast, but I, I love the idea of being able to keep your foot to the floor. It's usable power. Exactly. Yeah, it's usable power. You can rev the hell out of it, but you're not going to be going 300 miles an exactly. hour. Exactly. The new the, the new S is so fast, and just like the new GT3, it's so fast. Awesome for racetrack, but for daily use, I'm, I'd be cool with the base cam. And that was the one. Oh no, it was Matt Farah said it's less horsepower than a Ford Focus ST, right? It feels that, like less horsepower, but it's not really. It's too because well, the ST is like 252. Oh, it is. Like that, yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. All right. Right. I don't remember. Radiant. <laughs> really? Uh, it's high. Well, okay. I could be wrong. Okay. That I think that's all I got. Right. For best real world, I'd say probably a Barry Dino. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice, Max. Yeah, well, well done. By the way, check out Max's uh, the video that we did for Jalopnikang Drive. <laughs> I gotta get going. Um, <laughs> all right, right, right. One more. Well, I didn't do mine yet. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I did mine. Did, I just did. did. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> Cayman R. The whole conversation we just. That's had. right. All right, so one more question. Sure. What do we, why don't you pick it? Do you want to pick it? All right, well, let's do a quick one. What makes a girly car? Thing. Case in point, a lot of women driving FRS BRZ. I never really thought of wow, that as a girly car. Wow, girly car. You know what? PT I drive, Cruiser. You know PT what? Cruiser. You know PT what? Cruiser. PT Cruiser. All right, all right. <laughs> PT Cruiser. I, look, I drive a, uh, a Toyota MR2 Spider. I'm not going to talk about girly cars um, because I don't believe in them. PT Cruiser. Women can drive wherever any, they want. I don't care. Yeah. No, I, I think uh, to answer the question, anything that where the options dictate whether you buy the car or not. Oh, that's a that you know that's a good point. If the options dictate whether you buy the car yeah. or not, yeah. it's it's 
we'll just say it's not an ideal it's, enthusiast choice. Exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I'm gonna say that. Yeah. No, I, I like that. I just idea. categorize myself as such a douche. As a douchebag. It's fine. You're you're you're. Because there are plenty of honest. females I know out there who are fantastic. Uh, drivers and enthusiasts. Mm-hmm. That's so very true. I'm not gonna. Li- so let's try not to be sexist. PT Cruiser. No, I know. Uh, the w- actually, the women in our lives who are into cars will kill us when we get off of this um, topic. Already happened. Um, anyway, so there's one that Already was dead. sort of an interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. Coswell Parker um, asks, and and I think this is an in- uh, an important thing to address. To be a quote enthusiast, how much work, if any, should you be able to do on your own car? Oh, I think the spark plugs, oil change, tire, brake <laughs> change, yeah, you got to do all, all those. Okay. You have to be able to do all the necessary maintenance that you would bring to the shop if you had to own them. Okay. Yeah. You're saying, you're asking how much should we be able how to How much should do? someone, should one be able to do on their car in order to be classified as an enthusiast? Yeah, I think the things that JF said, you know, kind of basic maintenance, but you should probably know how to change a water pump or oh yeah there you know a belt uh, change a belt i mean yeah. if you have to do an alternator yeah. maybe you can change your shocks you know i, I don't know yeah. i'm i've done all these things uh, you know it's just a matter of learning and having the right tools so oh, actually that's no you have to be able to take out the front wheel drive of a 993 turbo <laughs> with all the wrong tools all the wrong tools and only one jack yeah <laughs> so that makes you a car enthusiast that's probably the hardest thing i've ever done in my entire life yeah so i'm gonna say that I don't think there should ever be any, anyone telling someone else how to be a car Damn enthusiast. It, <laughs> political, the best political Just answer. F that. That's you know, good, you c- good so you, so someone can work on cars, someone can't. Doesn't mean that they're not an enthusiast. That's all I'm saying. I mean, right. it's better. Look, Tire I just pressures? think it's it's probably better. Y- you have a better relationship with the thing that you're enthusiastic about if you are working on it regularly. Yeah. If you yeah. have your you know, you kind of get to know it in a way that, in, you know, in, encourages your knowledge of it. But it's the best answer. I hate you. Sorry. That's really the best answer. I'm just saying I got the best answers. I, there's nothing, there's something to be said for people who just want to drive their cars. And exactly. They have to, exactly. have to work to a really good mechanic who Yeah, no, it, I, think, I think you define yourself as a car enthusiast. No you matter still what, love cars. As long as you love right. to drive and you love the vehicles that are around you or love the vehicles that are out there. You don't yeah. even have to own a car. It's very true. Yeah, you don't even have to own a car. Who cares? All right, so one more question. Why is it that in general (laughs) cars are becoming more and more similar to each other in terms of looks? I would say it's probably efficiency and aero. It's aero. It is aero. Aero and crash standards. Right. Aero and crash standards. Pedestrian crash standards. Right. So, you know, if you ask um, Ian Collum from uh, Jaguar why the front ends of all the new Jags aren't really that appealing, or at least that they're not as appealing as the XKE was. It's because he says, and then, and he's right. And that's the thing. It's pedestrian safety. standards. So you can't, you can't flip a pedestrian up into the air and, and kill them anymore. You have to deposit them gently onto the, onto the hood. It's kind of, you know, we were just talking about this with the classic car club guys about the NSX. And I know I keep bringing that up, but I mean, you, a car like that, you just couldn't build it anymore. I mean, everything's so low. The f- nose is so low. The s- sides are so low. You know, have this greenhouse that kind yeah. of gives you all this visibility. Everything has the big tall front end now with the big side slab sides and S- side impact. It's, unfo- it's unfortunate, but at least for all of us, there's plenty of great cars already made that we could still love and that's purchase, very true. You know? When they um, design a car, when designers design a car now, it actually starts with the engineers. Yeah, they say, okay, this is this is the realm you have to. Design right. your car These within. are right. You, These the, are your constraints. Right. Design within those constraints. Right. That's how car design happens these days. And Based it looks like so if they yeah. yeah if really if if the government designed a car it would look like this. Yeah. <laughs> it would and look like you have to fit your design within a certain specification so that it meets tra- uh, certain crash standards. It would look like a parallelogram. It's kind of like when they build trapezoid. that one. Trapezoid. What, is boxes. this a trapezoid? Yeah. Well, it's the trapezoid I, it's paradox. It's design. <laughs> Keep in mind, I don't know what the design specifications Doesn't have to be. <laughs> I just Why did, did that as d- an example. <laughs> uh, I thought you knew. I just no, figured, wow, well, no, JF I know, knows. I, I know that, you know, you, have, you, have, to have, a, you have to have a, f- a flat Right. Uh, the flat front has face. to be a certain look number at of any inches. BMW, the side has to. Any BMW today, walk up to it and look straight down. It's a 
perfect flat face. You can at the see very all front. the way to the center of the Earth. Well, even just look at the first, the the mini, the, when they redid the mini, yeah. and then the second generation of that. The first mini had a much lower nose, yeah. and it was a little bit more compact. The second one, it was much more blunt on the front. And yeah, the sides were higher. I, I don't like it as much, but yeah. whatever. Yeah, all right, regulations. Exact. Time to go. Time to go. So right. uh, this is cool. This is this cool. We'll be doing this again um, with more of us. Yeah. Well, next time we'll do more fan-centric, questiony stuff. We just kind of did all that warm-up to kind of. Yeah. This is sort of a warm-up. I like starting off with uh, 707 crash. Oh, good. Thank you. That's uh, uh, remind me that uh, that. Uh, you would not be with us, Mike. Yeah. Thanks. I'm happy you are. Fantastic. So that's uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> our. Weird look on him. <laughs> no, <it's laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. Thanks JF. for bringing that up, JF. I, you know, I told you that in confidence. Oh, actually, no, I didn't. You just told you just everybody. Told everyone. On this <laughs> <show>. Cool. <laughs> so Max is going. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you just saying? I'm saying play the music. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. Now I got to fire it up. So I guess it's time to go. The this is the end of our podcast-like after drive. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Drive executive producer Jeff Musial. <laughs> Ian Whalen. Drive Mike. I'm done with that one. <laughs> Drive, <laughs> Drive producer Ian Whalen and uh, Jack of all trades. Maximilian Seeger on sound. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, man. And Thanks we'll for see making you guys, that audio. We'll, we'll see you guys back so uh, right here at the table pretty soon. <laughs>